Hi everyone, my name is Will with Atlassian. And in this video, we're going to take a look at one of the very first decisions that you'll make when creating projects in JIRA. A team-managed project versus a company-managed project. So here we are in JIRA, and when we create a new project, we first see all of these project templates. Now you might see different options here depending on which versions of JIRA you have unlocked in your instance. Uh, but for this video, we'll use a JIRA software template for Scrum. Now, immediately after we choose our template, we are presented with this team managed or company managed option. And this decision determines how your project will function. So it's important to understand these options. Let's start with a team managed project and take a look around there a little bit. Now, regardless of team managed versus company managed, all projects in JIRA have similar components. Things like notifications, um, automation rules. We can take a look at the issue types in this project um, right here and workflows as well, which we can see right here. These are all fully customizable so that you can set up this project exactly how you need it to function. Now you can add workflow statuses, like we can add a QA status, for example. Um, we can also add transitions between those statuses. So we'll just call this transition send to QA. And we can also make rules that affect issues as they move through this workflow. So let's say we want any issues moving to QA to be assigned to a specific user. We can do that as well. Now making these changes to the project to suit it to our needs is pretty quick and intuitive. Now in a team managed project, any changes or customizations that we make, like the workflow that we just edited, these changes only apply here to this project. So team managed projects are great for getting started quickly and they're incredible for teams who want full autonomy over how their project functions. Company projects, on the other hand, those are for folks who want to standardize project configuration across multiple different projects in your organization or who have really complex customizations with regards to permissions, notifications, or workflows. Now let's get back to our project creation screen um, and we'll select the same Scrum template and we will choose company managed this time. So while in team managed projects, you can simply make changes directly to that project, company managed projects are defined by various schemes, which serve essentially as blueprints for various aspects of a project. So schemes determine a lot of aspects about a project, including workflows, issue types, notifications. So if we want to change our workflow in a similar way by adding a new QA status, we need to locate and then edit the workflow scheme that is associated with this project. So we can find the scheme that this project is using easily enough. We just go to project settings and then workflow. And then this is the name of the scheme right here. Now it gets a little more complex here. A scheme can be associated with multiple projects, which is very helpful when making updates to multiple projects. Now, instead of changing each project individually, you can change the scheme that they all draw from effectively making bulk changes to your projects instead of a bunch of piecemeal changes. Since we want to add a QA status along with a few transitions, we can go ahead and copy this workflow, set it up how we need, and then associate this new workflow with the scheme that that project is using, meaning any project using this scheme will inherit this new workflow that we're about to build. To copy the workflow, we'll visit Settings, then we'll click on Issues, and then Workflows. Now here it is in the list, so we'll go ahead and copy it. And then we'll just leave all these fields as their defaults um, for demonstration purposes. And now we can see that we are working with an inactive workflow. And what that means is that it is not affecting any projects just yet. So let's go ahead and add our QA status, get that all entered in there. And then after that, we'll go ahead and add a transition into QA. And then we'll just give that a name, uh, send to QA. And then we'll add a transition out of QA as well. And we'll just name that one um, QA passed. So, Back to our list of schemes, let's click edit next to the scheme for the project we created. And then next we'll add workflow. We'll choose add existing, and then we will choose the workflow that we just created. Now here's where you can get very granular with your workflows. If you only want specific issue types to use this workflow, you can choose those specific issue types here. But to keep it simple, we'll choose all unassigned issue types, which means unless we specify otherwise, all issue types are gonna use this workflow. Back to our project now, we have one last step. So from our project board, we'll visit configure board and then click the plus sign to create a new column, give it a name, and then drag our new unmapped status into that new column. 
So as you can see, company managed projects require more administration to configure. However, let's get back to the project creation screen to check out one more aspect of company managed projects that's really, really useful. So we'll make our familiar selections and then eventually we'll get to the screen. And here we can check this box right here to share settings with an existing project. Now, if we were to choose the project that we just finished setting up, when we make this new project, it's gonna have all of those configurations already right away. Now, if we were to make a new team managed project, we'd have to do all that setup all over again. So I hope this helps explain the difference between a team managed and a company managed project. For additional information on this, please check out the links below in the video description.